What's up you guys, the RC Color King here, and today I'm gonna show you guys how you can step your RC films up to the next level. In this video, I'll show you the whole process of creating a cinematic RC video that's gonna impress anyone who sees it. To start, you'll need an RC vehicle. It can be anything. It will also be a good idea to pack along any spare parts or tools that you might need, especially if you're shooting in a remote location such as the mountains. Although not necessary, it always sucks to have to stop a shoot because your actress broke a knuckle. Next, you're going to need some camera gear. It can be anything, really, as long as it records. I've used it all and still do to this day. Having more gear just means that you'll have more options for the type of shots that you'll want to get. Alright, we've got all the gear figured out, but now we need a plot for our film. In filmmaking, story is king. You could have all the best gear in the world, but if your story makes no sense, your audience is going to lose interest. It's important to write down your film plot so that you have something to reference during your shoot. This will help ensure that you don't miss getting any shots or audio that you're going to need in your end product. Arriving on site for a shoot can be quite overwhelming, but having a plan laid out is going to set you up for success. You'll want to start by picking out the type of RC car that you're going to be filming. The type of RC vehicle that you pick is also going to influence the location that you're going to have to pick. Scouting the location is also going to save you a ton of time when it comes to shooting. Make mental note or write down any specific scenes, camera angles, or main obstacles while you're there. Once this has all been established, you can start to plan the main plot for your RC film. Let's walk through an example together. For the intro of your film, it's a good idea to have an establishing shot of the location. Typically a wide angle shot does this best or several different close up shots of the terrain. Next up, you're going to want to establish the character in your film. In this case, the RC car. I like to get a couple of close up shots showcasing the rig itself. Your intro needs to be short and to the point in order not to bore the audience and have them click away before we actually get to the good stuff. Next up, we're going to move into the body of our film. It's the main chunk that contains a vast majority of the actual action shots. Since you're going to be filming by yourself, you want to make sure you get several different angles of the vehicle doing the same obstacle. If it's a challenging hill climb, make sure to capture several different perspectives and compositions so that you can make quick cuts in post to keep the action moving. Having one single static shot for an entire obstacle isn't as attention grabbing as several different shots put together. At some point filming the body of your video, you're going to come across a good opportunity for the climax in your project. Or you may already have had an idea for what the climax was going to be when you did your location scouting. In this example, our climax is the Jeep digging itself into a rut during a hill climb. This then lines us up perfectly for the resolution of our plot which is going to be the Jeep winching itself one of the rut that it dug itself into, which then leads us quickly to the end of our film, where the Jeep reaches the top of the hill climb. Now that the backbone of our film is laid out, it's time to talk about the actual composition of our shots that's going to help keep our audience engaged. A few I like to use are creating depth of field using foreground elements, reflections in still water, lens flares, now if you have a camera with high resolutions and frame rates, you're going to be able to use those to your advantage as well. 4K is going to be useful when you want to crop or keyframe a camera movement in post. And high frame rates are going to be useful for, you guessed it, buttery smooth slow-mo. Lighting is also going to set the mood and overall tone for your project and plays an important role in your film. Filming at noon on a clear blue day when the sun's right at the top of the sky is going to create some really hard lighting conditions. Whereas filming during an overcast day with lots of clouds is like having a massive softbox in the sky. It's going to create some very soft shadows and allows for a much flatter lighting. Shooting during a sunset or sunrise is one of my favorite times to be filming. It's the best opportunity too to catch some of those spicy lens flares. Nighttime makes for a challenging and creative way to film as well, especially if your RC car is equipped with lights. If you plan on filming at night though, you're going to want to invest in a portable light source. This will come in handy to light any night scenes that you're going to be filming. You're also going to be able to use the light source at night to do light painting photos, which I'm going to cover in a future video. Since you're going to be filming this video by yourself, you're going to need a lot of shots. And I mean a lot of shots. 
You're gonna wanna mix it up though. You don't want too many stationary tripod shots. You'll wanna toss in some action-packed gimbal shots as well as some onboard point of view shots as well if you can. It can be a bit tricky, but if you're used to driving with one hand and steering with your thumb, you'll be able to handle the gimbal and film the car at the same time while you drive. Quickly, I'm gonna go over your camera settings and how that's going to affect the overall look of your video. First thing we're gonna talk about is aperture. It basically affects the depth of field of your project. Typically because the autofocus on my camera kinda sucks, I like to use a higher aperture number so that there's more in focus. I'll manually focus my shot and then maintain the same distance from my subject. The last thing you want is your shot being ruined by that terrible searching autofocus. Also, a lower aperture number is going to make soft balls on of light sources, whereas a higher aperture number is going to make stars on of light sources. Next, we'll talk briefly about shutter speed. It's a pretty easy one to understand. Typically, you want to follow the 180 degree rule. And this just means that if you're shooting at 60 frames per second, you want to have your shutter speed set to 1 over 120. This will ensure that you have the proper looking motion blur in your shots. Setting the shutter speed incorrectly and having too high of a value is going to lead to a very choppy looking shot. In order to be able to maintain an accurate shutter speed and help control exposure, you're going to want to think about investing into an ND filter, especially a variable one. It's going to really help you control your exposure and make sure that you can maintain your aperture and shutter speed values. Next up we have ISO, which basically just means how sensitive your camera sensor is to light. It doesn't have much effect on the overall look of the film, however, if it gets too high it can start to look a bit noisy and grainy. Lastly we have white balance. It's important to lock the white balance setting in as per whatever scene you're shooting so that your colors stay consistent throughout your shot. Leaving it in auto can lead to the color changing halfway through a shot and make color grading a nightmare in post. Great, now that we know everything there is to know about filming an RC film, let's go out and put it into action. Alrighty guys, that sure was a lot of fun. I hope you guys learned something new and informative that you'll be able to put into action on your own RC films. If you guys have anything else that you'd like to know that I didn't mention in the video, just leave me a comment down below and I'll get to it in a future video. Most importantly, don't forget to be fancy guys and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.